Hello, YouTube Symphony Strings. This is MTT saying hello to you today. Uh, I have a great pleasure now to introduce the concertmaster of the San Francisco Symphony, Alexander Baranchik, who has been my dear friend and colleague since back in the days of the London Symphony and many other stories. And I've asked Sasha to just give us a little bit of an insight into the feeling and the kind of stroke that we need for this Vila Lobos extraordinary Bachianas Brasileiras, which has to have great intensity and great Brazilian swing and also somehow the sound of a Bach solo sonata. So what can you tell us about this, Sash? First of all, hi everybody. First of all, congratulations. You got a chance to work with Michael Tilson Thomas. Oh, stop. <laughs> I'm sure it will be an unforgettable experience. We are looking at uh, the fugue and uh, just few thoughts uh, that I believe can help you to unify your strokes and uh, in this case even your, uh, the choice of your fingerings. So I believe that the best way to play it would be in the middle of your bow and uh, make sure that you articulate all uh, the eight notes uh, in the slow motion I will play for you a little slower so you see the the eight notes are articulated now regarding the fingerings my suggestion is to stay in the position and use both A and E string not going down on E because the rhythm is tight, rhythm is tight and uh, there is not much time for shifting. Uh, even uh, uh, later on when it is piano uh, section, uh, I am talking about this one. Stay, uh, the, the um, volume goes down, but stay in the middle and uh, uh, make sure that you articulate the same way as uh, the previous uh, section, which is mezzo forte. So those are a couple of suggestions, and uh, it's nice to uh, mark this uh, uh, couple of sforzandos with a little impulse in your right hand, so you really hear the very beginning of the note. So shall we try maybe yes. uh, at uh, figure it's, six, it's this figure is where six. the first violins are playing the fugue subject That's for the right. first time. Yeah, uh, so uh, try to make sure that I, I, I always uh, I, a big advocate of playing somewhere near the middle because then you have two ways to uh, escape from dead end. It's either down or up. If you're close to the tip, there is a dead end and you only have one direction, same at the frog. So stay compact, stay in the middle and try to articulate. In the same time, the thing uh, should be light. Don't press too much. And can I say, you know, you see the way the notes are arranged in this piece. It's 5-8, and then 3-4. And in the 5-8 part, it's 2-8 plus 3-8. So we have this in slow motion. Let's play together once, Sasha. Okay. Sure. That's the feeling. And then when you have uh, accompanying groups like uh, but always that one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's the feeling. That's yeah. what keeps it alive and kind of primitive and sophisticated at the same time. It's uh, very helpful if you can think of some words when the rhythm is difficult and uh, the great historical example is Rimsky-Korsakov who uh, uh, when he, he wrote something in 11 quarters, 11-4 and couldn't co really conduct because he got uh, uh, confused. 
uh, his solution was to say Rimsky Korsakov so Sem Su Masa Shol eleven, which means Rimsky Korsakov is out of his mind. <laughs> when he thought about his phrase, he did it. So whatever language you want to think about it in, get those words and those rhythms going and we'll rock the joint. Thanks. Enjoy.